Good morning, everyone. Very nice to see you all here in Oostend. Uh, so let's hope we get some sunshine because then the view on the beach will be a, a bit better in, during the breaks. Um, I, what I'm, well, I have the honor to uh, to kick off more or less the, the actual training, and um, you're going to see in the next three days that the project run by the CDataNet community is it's actually called CData Cloud. And in the next three days, you're going to see what we really wanted to achieve because working in the cloud. So the first two days will be allocated to the VRE, the virtual research environment, um, where you can do, well, in the end, we're not there yet, but you will see already a lot of things that will work for you. Uh, work on ODV, work with Diva, um, some, some initial uh, uh, additional viewing of data, not by having to download it first and work on your desktop, but work in the cloud, work online. Um, and then the last day, we will, uh, I will demonstrate and with, with other colleagues the uh, CDI service as well to, uh, uh, to show you that what we achieved by getting the, getting the data online in the cloud and then achieving faster and more reliable uh, downloads for the, for the users. So for those of you not so familiar maybe um, with uh, our components, we will start every session with a, a little introduction and then we go deeper and deeper into the, into the material. So first, a few words about the virtual research environment. I'm actually presenting this on behalf of the whole team. We are quite a big group, um, more than 10, I think, working on the, on the VRE for the last two years. Um, and so let's show you where we are at the moment, what you can, what you can expect, because it's uh, well, probably even more exciting for us than for you, <laughs> what we're going to do today, because um, we have to see how it all works and what your feedback is on it. So the virtual research environment, what, what well, there, there, there's, it's a kind of a buzz almost, and you see the many projects now popping up. Um, what we want to facilitate is collaborative research and individual research online, so not having to download it first. Uh, we want to facilitate that you can um, uh, combine additional or take subsets from big data sets, use them online without having to download them and also taking them from other locations in the end. Um, having a, at least a capacity that's comparable to the one that you have on your normal laptop and preferably beyond of course, so that you can at the later stage process big data sets that you would normally uh, have trouble with. Uh, working with on your own laptop. But of course we have to take into account also the privacy. If you're working on a certain data set, you do not want to share it. It shouldn't be, should be for you only until you um, release it for, uh, for publication. Um, we also wanted to set up the uh, virtual research environment more or less for groups so that, let's say a group working on chemistry Chemistry data could work together um, on, on uh, and, uh, and another one for uh, temperature and salinity. And they could easily share the data among each other and the results. Um, and uh, uh, in CData Cloud, um, the cloud part is supplied by the colleagues of EUDAT, the European uh, Data Infrastructure parts. Uh, they are uh, offered. Uh, they consist of many um, scientific institutes like universities who have high performance computing capacity and they allocate part of that capacity for the EU net network and then to be used by communities like ours. And the CData com net community is one of the first communities actually using that. So we use the service components that are offered to us by um, the EUDAT colleagues and in um, CDataNet we have five um, partners uh, as representatives. We have DKRZ, Sinica, so DKRZ from Germany, uh, Merit is here, yeah, oh, all the way in the back. So she's, she will be keeping a close watch on the virtual research environment because that's at the moment hosted by the DKRZ um, platform. We have Sinica in Italy, we have uh, GRNet in um, in Greece, we have STFC, 
in, uh, in the UK, and now I'm forgetting one. Which one am I forgetting? CSC. Ah, CSC. Ah. Where, where, where the CDI servers are hosted at the moment. So, yeah, it must be the tension of standing here. Um, okay, so the, what, what we did was actually, instead of trying to fix everything and solve everything with this virtual research environment at the start, we took, we made a list of use cases that we wanted to achieve, and we took the first one, which was actually, which actually covered, covers almost all the services that the other use cases also need, and it's the temperature and salinity water column analysis. So it's more or less the uh, CDataNet uh, temperature and salinity working group, and the representatives there, what would they need? And in order to support that, um, that use case, we also came up with a kind of an architecture that we need to go. We have, I don't know if I have a mouse, I don't know if you see it, but a very broad um, light, we will have a front end layer with virtual labs, so a user interface, and we have in the back, we have services running like web ODV, so not ODV, but a, 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 let's say a cloud version of, um, of ODV with Jupyter Hub. Um, supporting Diva, for example, uh, with additional quality control, um, transformation services, all service, uh, services on a service layer. And then at the bottom, we will have a, a data layer where you have your, your workspace that you can draw in data or have it already available for you to work with. And then that is all, well, more or less secured by Marine ID at the start with an. Uh, um, a link to B2Access, and B2Access is actually the component from EU that to secure all these different services. <clears throat> and behind the, the scenes, there's accounting as well to see what the, how the services perform um, and um, how many users there are, what they what they use. Well, this will probably be almost unreadable from if you're sitting in the back, but um, it's just a, a zoomed in. Uh, one on the on the uh, architecture, and you will see that we will work as much as we can with um, RESTful APIs as to 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 make use of the um, to make use of the services um, with WebDAV that that you see well that's behind the screens, but that's for the for the access to the workspace to the data workspace, and very important Marine ID. So this is this. Uh, summary of the of the first use case, and it's um, more or less a, an abstract of the uh, of the work that the um, people working on data products in C Data Cloud are using. So what what they will do is they will log in, they will then get a user interface. Um, then you have a dashboard. From the dashboard, you you use Web ODV first to uh, uh, to apply. Uh, data co quality control on a ODV data collection. From that, there will be a result of, of errors, flaws in the, in the data that could be emailed back, summarized, emailed back to the, uh, to the data centers from which the, the data comes. Then they will configure, they will open the next uh, part of the dashboard. They will open a Diva via the Jupyter Notebook configure the, the interpolation, apply the interpolation, um, extract some profiles, view the data, then save it. It's still saved in your workspace. Um, and then you can do additional visualization of the data. And you will see that during the next two days when we work on the VRE, you will see these steps pass by. So we will go first go to WebODV, then DIVA, and then additional um, viewing. So just some more words on that. Um, we will have a dashboard, and I will take you to it um, at the end of this presentation. Then you will have my workspace. That's where you can upload, download the data from. Um, all the results of the services will always end up in your workspace. And there's a component. There's several components for web ODV, uh, data extraction, and um, uh, quality control. And Rainer will take you through that. 
And we have Diva, uh, or Diva ND, I should actually call it now, running on the Jup Jupyter Notebook. We have Biological QC, um, that's not fully integrated yet, but this afternoon we will have a, a session about that. And there's additional visualization options. So then if we look to the organization uh, of the sessions, today we have Web ODV, and at the end of the afternoon we have Biological uh, Data QC. Then tomorrow we have Diva via the Jupyter Notebook and uh, the visualization. And what we will do and what we will request you is to, um, to work with two students, that's you, uh, behind one laptop. And that is also to limit the, the amount of resources we need uh, on the services. It's already quite a big group working in parallel. You will understand some services are very taking quite some capacity on the on the, on the servers. Um, and in normal life, if people would be working from their office, they would never go together. Well, we will not have that many users going in there to, uh, at one time. But now during a training, it's quite heavy if you all go with well, 49 we had, 49 machines. And um, so even if we so if we work with two persons behind one laptop, we have about half the users. Um, we tested it out with about 12 so far. So it's, as I said, it's uh, really exciting for us too, but the, the trainers um, will take you uh, through and make some, some steps and uh, Merit in the back will monitor, monitor the services and uh, hopefully we'll go through the day without any sweat and just, uh, it will be plain. But well, we'll see how it goes. Um, in every session you will get first get a demonstration and then you will get some exercises by the trainers. Um, of course, this, it's, it's open once you, um, the, during the whole day, if you have any questions, um, ask the, the trainer or the, or the, the other uh, colleagues if you're, you're stuck or, um, or if you have uh, some, uh, some other problems or questions about the techniques. Um, and at the end of the day, we will also, every day we'll have a feedback session. So the last half hour, I think, will be dedicated to a question and answer with the trainers about the sessions of the day. Are there any questions so far? Otherwise, I'm going to prepare you for the, for the first session. And we will do that. And here you can see that it runs still on the DKRZ servers. Uh, at the end, of course, it will be under vre.zdatanet.org, but it's not there yet. It's now under orca.dkrz.de. And it's important that you have the HTTPS before it. In front of it. So the best probably if you have a, that you can click it. Um, so please go with uh, just the one laptop that you will be sharing. If you're sitting next to your colleague, please um, use um, Please make pairs of two. And I hope either one of you, so one of the two, has at least a marine ID. Because if you go to orca. And I will do the same thing. You will get this screen. Yeah, then log in with your marine ID, one of the two. Then it depends a bit if you have been here before. Um, it might be that my screen will be different than yours. So I will go back to the presentation. Claudia, 
Where's my presentation? How can I? Oh, I can just uh, take it again. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey. It's not the last version. Sorry. So if you go in, you will see that you get an identity provider request and you have to go through a whole step, some steps to actually register your Marine ID as part of the B2 access identity provider. And you have to do that once, the second time it will go much faster. You have to accept a couple of steps, confirm, and then in the end, you will end up here on the dashboard. It um, turns out that if you have a problem and you're stuck at some point, if you don't close the browser, um, most of you will be in Chrome, but we saw that if you switch to Firefox that you have more chance. Anyway, I think if you get stuck, close the browser, Take a new one, and if you were stuck in Firefox, try Chrome. <laughs> Somehow it's, um, there's a kind of a block in between, but we notice that if you go to the other browser, then all of a sudden you end up here. Because what, I'm, what we're going to do now, if you're at the dashboard, um, if you're at the dashboard, then the first thing you have to do is to click the private workspace for the first time. And the first time it might take up to so two minutes or so. So if you click it, with me it will be pretty fast, I think. Although it might also be that it's a new installation. But during the day, you, this will be after it has been built up. It's now constructing actually your directories and it's loading the training material on it for just your user. So click the workspace and, um, and wait. I had run already one success there all the way in the back. He was already in. And if we do it with uh, 25 at the same time, let's see what happens. <laughs> it's it's worthy, of course. Uh, I got a timeout now, I think. Um, if you're, the recommendation is not to go through the Wi-Fi, by the way. So if you have the cable, please use the cable in the machine that you are using for the training. They are, they are sitting per two. So please, per two, take one machine and work together.
I'm there now. Um, I think we have sufficient number of laptops in, but I really must say now that once we go into the training with Rainer, please work only in pairs of two. Because now what, what Rainer is going to do with you takes a lot more, well, after his introduction, I guess, but takes a lot more um, capacity from the servers, and that is far beyond what we have tested it on. Um, so. Even if you're all four logged in sometimes, really use only per two, one machine. Yeah, thank you. 